Welcome all, my name is Bryce, and I am a geologist. I aim to entertain people with knowledge about geology, the study that has to do with everything about rocks and minerals. Welcome to my channel, Rockology. In the last video we covered, what defines a mineral? In this video, we will be learning how minerals are categorized. Humans have always felt the need to categorize things to make it easier to remember or use things in everyday life. We love to do this in science and a lot in geology. The people to start what classification system we know was created by a father and son team, Dana and Dana. The Dana and Dana classification system was created in the mid to late 1800s based on atomic structure and or symmetry of the atomic arrangement and chemistry. The classes are native elements, silicates, oxides, sulfides, sulfates, halides, carbonates, phosphates, and mineraloids. Today, we've added onto this system and used the minerals anions, anion complexes, key elements, physical properties, and unique atomic structure to classify them. I'll explain each of those in detail as we get further in the video. Now, with over a hundred elements on the periodic table, there are a massive amount of stable and unstable combinations that could exist in nature mineralogically. But let us think about this. What is the chemical composition of the Earth overall? And why am I telling you this? I want you to ponder at why am I asking this specific question. Anyway, the Earth's overall composition is roughly this. Iron, which is 34.63% of the Earth's composition, Oxygen, which is 29.53%, silicon, which is 15.20%, magnesium, which is 12.7%, nickel, which is 2.39%, sulfur, which is 1.93%, calcium, which is 1.13%, aluminum, 1.09%, and all the other elements that comprise the Earth's composition only make up 1.4%, such as sodium, potassium, cobalt, manganese, titanium, and more. How we know this is from data gathered over time from concepts like studying the rock's composition of the Earth, meteorites, the composition of the solar system from an astrophysics point of view, and more. I would love to go in detail about these, but they come into play in future videos since they themselves could have an entire video about them individually. So if that's the Earth, what is the crust like? The mantle, the inner core, and the outer core like? Are they different? Are they the same? Well, it's simple. The concept is what is denser sinks further down, over time of course. There are more factors that come into play since in all actuality it is not that plain cut and dry. The denser materials will amass and sink in an area depending on what is around it and what processes are going on. The crust has its worth in silicon, 46%, oxygen, 27%, then followed by potassium, calcium, sodium, and iron at 5% of the crust. Unfathomable that we build everything industrially out of steel from iron and barely 5% is within our reach of mining. Now, going deeper, the lighter elements will not sink as deep if there is something denser than it for it to be on top of, like oil and water for instance. Density can change with things like heat, which is why magma rises since it is hotter or less dense than the surrounding rock around it. If there is something less dense and has the ability, it will move to be on top of the denser material since the denser material is sinking towards the core and the less dense material is heading for the surface. For instance, Iron is the most prevalent at the inner core, and is made up of 90% iron and 10% nickel, and is solid, so anything less dense than this will float on top of it. Which then is the outer core, which is 80% molten iron and 20% nickel in the outer core which floats on top of it. Again, it has almost the same composition of the inner core, but the outer core is less dense due to its temperature and floats on top of the inner core. Then you have the mantle on top, which we know its composition from rocks that get to the surface in the form of magma or lava that solidifies over time. So have you figured out why I'm telling you this? Well, this will show you what kind of minerals you are going to find in these certain parts of the Earth. Think about the chemistry of the Earth's crust I just showed you. You are not going to find a crap ton of minerals made from titanium, uranium, platinum, and gold, so no, sorry, we will not be finding any vibranium anytime soon. 
but we do see pockets of these elements, enough to use them either in their near raw elemental form or formed into a new mineral to which we can extract them from. We will talk about this when we get more into detail about the Earth's structure in a later video. Now, with this knowledge, we can predict what we are going to see mineral-wise, which means the minerals that make up the layers will be made up primarily by what is common in those layers, elemental-wise. Minerals we will see will be of many different elements, but we will see mostly minerals made of oxygen, silicon, potassium, calcium, sodium, and iron in the crust. Though, not everything in the crust is only these five elements, so you still get a wide range of variety of what you can see in the Earth's crust, like how we find enough uranium to use industrially, but it does not even make up anywhere near a majority of what is within the Earth. Now, let's show you some of these mineral groups. The first one is silicates. Its anion complex is SiO4. The mineral example would be forsteroid. Its chemical composition is Mg2SiO4. The next group is halides. Its anions are chlorine, fluorine, bromine, and iodine. A mineral example would be halite, or salt. Its chemical composition is NaCl. The next group is oxides. Its anion complex is O2. A mineral example is corundum, and its chemical composition is Al2O3. The next group is hydroxides. Its anion complex is an OH group. A mineral example is gibbsite and its chemical composition is Al, parentheses, OH, parentheses, 3. The next group is carbonates. Its anion complex is parentheses, CO3, and a parentheses, 2. A mineral example is calcite. Its chemical composition is Ca, CO3. The next group is nitrates. Its anion complex is NO3. A mineral example is nitrotite. Its chemical composition is NaNO3. The next group is borates. It has two anion complexes that it's known for, which are parentheses BO3 and a parentheses 3, or parentheses BO4 and a parentheses 5. And a mineral example would be cinolite. Its chemical composition is MgAlBO4. The next group is sulfates. Its anion complex is SO4-2. A mineral example is gypsum, and its chemical composition is CaSO4 times 2 H2O. The next group is chromates. Its anion complex is CrO4-2. A mineral example is crocoite. Its chemical composition is PbCrO4. The next group is phosphates, which is parentheses PO4 and a parentheses 3. A mineral example is apatite, and its chemical composition is CaS parentheses PO4 and a parentheses 3, followed by one of the following in the parentheses OH, F, or Cl. The next group is sulfides. In its element that is characteristic of it, because it's neither an anion or anion complex, is sulfur. A mineral example is pyrite, and its chemical composition is FeS2. There are more mineral classification groups, but we will bring them up when they are necessary in the future. The overall thing you are seeing in parentheses are anions, being a single negatively charged particle of an element, or anion complexes, a group of elements bonded together that form a negatively charged complex, and lastly, characteristic elements of those classes of minerals, like sulfur, which do not fit either of those groups. Similar minerals will have similar properties due to similar chemistry or structure, such as anions, anion complexes, and how they bond, and more. Just to give you a better understanding of anion's purposes, they have a particle that they like to bond with called cations. Anions are negative and cations are positive. When bonded together, they will make a neutrally charged molecule. In chemistry, things want to be in their most stable and neutrally charged state if possible, hence why they bond together if under the correct temperatures and pressures. Now, even though most of their traits are controlled by chemistry, what would you say makes a good example of an atomic structure changing or controlling the characteristics of the mineral? 
In geology, there are minerals that can be made up of the same chemical formula. Silicon dioxide is one of the best examples, in my opinion, for this. It can form quartz, flint, chalcedony, glass, coesites, dishevite, and more, all by changing the conditions under which the chemical formula crystallize, which then changes the crystalline structure of the mineral. Now, moving on, we get to the most important group of minerals within the classification system, which is silicates. Because silicates actually have a subclass of several different types of minerals within them. Silicates are by far the most important of the mineral groups because of the variety that we have discovered due to their prevalence on Earth. They make up 99% of minerals that come from lava or magma, and make up 90% of all minerals in the crust and mantle. They are broken into seven different groups and all contain a variation of silicon and oxygen bonded together. The first kind of silicates are three-dimensional framework silicates or tectosilicates. They have a silicon to oxygen ratio content of one to two. The next group is sheet silicates or phyllosilicates. They have a silicon to oxygen ratio of two to five. The next group is single chain silicates or isosilicates. They have a silicon to oxygen ratio of 1 to 3. The next is double chain silicates or inosilicates. They have a silicon to oxygen ratio of 4 to 11. The next is ring silicates or cyclosilicates. They have a silicon to oxygen ratio of 1 to 3 or 6 to 18. The next is isolated tetrahedral silicates, or nesosilicates. They have a silicon to oxygen ratio of 1 to 4. The last are paired tetrahedral silicates, or sorosilicates. They have a silicon to oxygen ratio of 2 to 7. This is the basic setup of the classification of mineral groups. There are more groups, like I said, but this video is more so to familiarize you with the way we categorize them, not the entirety of them. It is simply the next building block in understanding geology. That is all for now, but do not worry, we will be back to explain more in my next video, Physical and Chemical Properties of Minerals. I hope this video was worth the watch. I'm always up for constructive criticism to make the channel better if you have any. Thanks for watching, you guys. Hope you come back with a thirst for more knowledge, because knowledge is a power of its own, and it can unlock many doors to other knowledge. If you have questions, ask in the comments. Maybe I'll answer with a video. Hope to see you again soon, and rock on! If you like the content you just watched, please help the channel grow. Like and subscribe gets me out to more viewers. On top of that, I also have a Patreon set up if you'd like to donate money to the channel. This money will be used so that I can buy other equipment to make the videos more interesting and also create more content that I can't with what I have right now. I appreciate it as always.